Welcome to Access Rhode Island and its program, Kids Count. My name is Elizabeth Burke Bryant, Executive Director of Rhode Island Kids Count. And today and each time we have this program, we have a chance to look at an important issue affecting the children or youth of Rhode Island. And today we're really thrilled to have on the program guests from a very wonderful organization called AS220, and I'd like to introduce them to you now. First, we have Bert Kranka. Bert is the Artistic Director of AS220 and its program, Broad Street Studio. Welcome, Bert. Great to have you on the program. Thanks for having us. And secondly, we have <coughs> Randolph Placide. It's great to have you, Randolph. I know you've been involved with Broad Street Studio and AS220, and it'll be great to hear how you're involved and what you're doing there. So welcome. Well, thank you. And finally, we're very happy to welcome Justin Lake, who has agreed to be on the program to talk about his involvement with Broad Street Studio. Welcome, Justin. My pleasure. Well, Bert, it's been um, a wonderful thing watching over the years your work with AS220, the organization that you, you and your colleagues have built from what was really a small effort but a passionate one at first mm -hmm. to something that is now so widely recognized. Um, at Rhode Island Kids Camp, we try to shine a light on what's working well, especially for kids. And I just want to say, you know, we've been watching for years and so impressed by what you guys do. But for viewers who don't know about AS220, if you could kick us off, Bert, with what is <coughs> AS220? How did you sure. get that unusual name? Sure. AS Alternative Space Art Space 220 Way Bossage Street, where we started. Oh, okay. um, on, the, on the third floor of the Performing Arts Center. We've been around since 1985. Um, today, we own three buildings in downtown Providence. We have affordable work and live studio spaces for artists, performance space, exhibition space, cafe, commercial tenants. And probably the most dynamic thing we do is the youth program that we started 10 years ago, uh, which is in service both to the Rhode Island Training School and to a lot of kids that are in foster care, and also just kids that come, about, come through, uh, through word of mouth. We offer, this trimester we're offering about 20 classes, workshops and classes for young people, it's all free. Uh, that's mm -hmm. on the outside. And then on inside the Rhode Training School, we, uh, we, I think we run about eight to 10 workshops a week uh, for young people there in all different art forms, from writing to music to visual arts, to, to all kinds of stuff. Wow, that is really, really amazing. And to think about what those young people wouldn't get if it wasn't for AS220. And Randolph, what's your role, and how did you first walk in the door and meet Bert Kranka? Uh, I met Bert, you know, in September of 06 after stopping by in July of 06 to talk with Morari and uh, everyone in the performance, you know, department of AS220, you know, because I had gotten word of mouth that, you know, students were getting paid, you know, to have these classes. But what made me stay was actually the hip hop program. And I actually joined with their group called The Roadshow. And from there, I, like, I felt like an absolute superstar. Like, everything blew up for me, having performances, you know, way out in South Carolina, you know, to even wow. have one home-based. Performances around Rhode Island? Yes. And so um, what role do you play in the, ro it's the, the Roadshow? Is that what you said? Yes. Hip-hop? Yes. So do you sing and dance? Do you play an instrument? I, I recently just started singing, yeah. but I came in as a, a rapper and a dancer. Oh, great. Yes. And was this the first official place where you could do that art in, in with other young people that actually had some support as you were doing it? As a real art form, I guess I should say, as opposed to something you just did. True, yes. As an art form, yes, you know, besides from the little school dances, you know, yeah. to show off what I could do. <laughs> yeah. As the formal aspect of it, yes. And so how many young people are in the Roadshow group? Um, as for right now, uh, it's about five or six of us. Great. Yes. You know, um, when it started, something like almost nine, ten yeah. of them. And then from there, I started, what, maybe seven years ago? Yeah, almost seven years ago. You know, nine or ten students, and, you know, it either dwindled down or grew up. You know, I know from the history, the most they've had is 13. Right. You know, so. But it can expand and contract, and what counts is the students who are involved, the young people that are involved that want to be together doing this art, right? Definitely. And Definitely. that's what makes it work. 
definitely. Well, we'll be back right back to you <laughs> because I know you're doing some very, very interesting things now. But I want to turn over to Justin and say, what brought you to, was it Broad Street? That yes. Broad Street Studio? Mm -hmm. What made you walk in that door? Had you heard about it from a friend? No, um, I was more on my own type of thing uh, back then, uh, four years ago. I happened to meet Bert. And um, he was talking about art, and I found out that through Bert that it was an art studio where I went out to him where I was drawing a piece of artwork for him, and he said that I should join the program. And I um, explained to him that I needed to get my GED, and he also explained to me that I could get that as well. And um, so I had a little uh, mis communication we lost contact after um, maybe a couple of years and then I came back to uh, AS220 to pursue that and um, between that I had um, a little bit of problems with mm -hmm. uh, physical and um, uh, what's that word now physical and stressful issues uh, yeah where just some setbacks some setbacks yeah. exactly thank you um, setbacks from where I couldn't uh, proceed on to getting the stuff that I needed to get done at the time so um, it was proud it was were you happy that door was open again when you went back oh like absolutely because a lot it of was, times in life those doors close and I think that must say something about the philosophy of AS220 that mm -hmm. you felt like you were welcome back is that sort of how it was? Yes, definitely. I I thought that, you know, I had a big smile on my face when I actually seen Bert after, what, two, three years? And, you know, just surprising to the type of person I am. I see something that's too good to be true, most likely it's not. Mm -hmm. um, so I went in there and I just wanted to pursue on getting things done. And Bert, ever since then, has been helping me out with that, along as the other staff management that's been uh, working with me on that. And now you're, you're pursuing art as well as um, music, is that right? Yes, correct. And what's your instrument? Um, uh, the piano. I, I like to play the keyboard. Um, I play it different than everybody else because um, I have a disability and paralyzing my left arm yeah. due to a severely bad car accident and I play with one hand. And wow. I would still do pretty good at it. I get compliments now and again, or <coughs> That's maybe too much. No, you probably deserve them. But you're also able to pursue um, your GED, getting um, that, and as well as your musical and artistic talents all in one, under one roof, yes, right? Yes, correct. Well, Bert, um, it sounds like this has evolved over the years, like a lot of things do, when you uh, get a group of people that really want to work together. AS220 came first, and then Broad Street Studio. Tell us about that. <clears throat> well, what it would have so kind of an, it, it is a fascinating story. Um, Department of Children, Youth, and Families came to see me because they were going to apply to a, uh, the federal government for a grant to a, incorporate more arts programming at the Rhode Island Training School. The grant required they had a community partner. The long, the short story is we didn't get the grant. But it got me introduced to a, a young man out there, Demian Yato, who was teaching poetry after school class there. And I was um, really inspired by what he was doing. And at the time, AS220 was trying to create, institutionalize some sort of a youth program. So I went out there to his class and got really fell in love with the kids out there. Uh, and AS220's objective has always been to provide services and opportunities, particularly to those that don't have access. Right. Um, what better population? So I started teaching.